everyone welcome back to another episode of reality decoded in this episode we are going to talk about the anunnaki and our relationships with them by the end of this episode i hope to be able to shed some light on human origins and our origins in the stars let's go exploring from my research the anunnaki are a species or a group of deities who kind of appear in a lot of the mythological traditions of like ancient Sumeria, the ancient Assyrians, the Akkadians, and sometimes in the earliest Sumerian writings about them, which actually come from like the post-Akkadian period, they describe the Anunnaki as the most powerful deities of the entire pantheon, descendants of An and Ki, the goddess and god of heavens and the earth, whose primary functions were to actually decree the fates of humanity. But recently, since since like the second half of the 20th century, these concepts have been like subject to massive pseudo archaeology and like conspiracy theories of not really understanding where the truth lies in all of this. So that's why I put together this so we can explore. So the name Anunnaki actually came from the word An or the Sumerian god of the sky. The name is actually written as Anuna, A hyphen N U N A, Anuna meaning actually or directly translating to like the princely offspring so the anunnaki are actually supposed to be a offspring of an and ki the god and goddess of heaven and earth and the oldest of the anunnaki is enlil and he is the god of air and the chief god of the, the whole sumerian pantheon so it was actually believed by the sumerians that until enlil was born like the heavens and earth were actually inseparable this veil that exists between us and the spirit world now was rumored to not have existed before enlil was born and it's believed that enlil, enlil literally like cleft the heavens and the earths and twine like that and while he carried away the earth his father on carried away the sky thus creating the separation between us and them and it existed during the third dynasty of the civilization of Ur. You are Ur. <laughs> and originally, the name Anunnaki was actually reserved for the strongest of all of these pantheons, or the top seven god, gods and goddesses of this, which are An, Enlil, Enki, Ninhursag, Nana, Utu, and Inanna. Okay, remember those names, they're important. But I will say that there is no complete list of all of the Anunnaki. We have like, you know, bits and pieces of all of the different lists from not only the Sumerian tablets, but other archeological discoveries that came from that time period as well. But there is no complete list. It's amazing. And the Sumerian texts describe all of the Anunnaki lineage like non-chronologically, it's insane. And none of them agree on how many Anunnaki there actually were or even they don't agree on what their divine functions even were. There's a lot of inconsistency with these. The only real archaeological evidence that we have are the Sumerian clay tablets. Which brings us to our next point. The wonderful gentleman who has spent 70 plus years of his life translating these tablets in order to give us an actual historical archaeological rendition of what happened. And his name is Zachariah Stitchin, okay? He studied economics at the University of London and was best known for his French theories on the origins of Earth and mankind's celestial ancestry from the Anunnaki, okay? And he's actually one of the few scholars who is actually able to translate these texts for us. He has seven books that he compiled. They're called the Earth Chronicles with all of his translations. I actually would love to get my hands on them. But one of his main claims in his first novel, it's called The Twelfth Planet. His main claim here is that there is a planet that extends past Neptune that has an orbit that goes throughout our system once every 3600 years. And according to him, an advanced not only like technological race, but a biologically sentient race called the Anunnaki inhabit this planet. And he claims further that they are the missing link between us, Homo sapien, and the ancestral humans that we have living on Earth. And I certainly need to note here that his endeavors in order to explain the why are we here and what are we doing questions certainly don't need to go unappreciated because this man has spent 70 plus years of his life on these tablets and these translations, okay, for their authenticity. And in some ways, I kind of think we owe it to at least learn what's there. 
So according to his tablets, the Anunnaki arrived on Earth 450,000 years ago looking for minerals, namely gold or monoatomic gold, okay, which they actually began mining in Africa. When the Anunnaki miners became displeased with the working conditions, it was decided that the Anunnaki genes and the Homo erectus genes would be engineered to create a sort of slave race that would be tailor-made to fulfill the needs of the Anunnaki to mine these minerals on Earth, okay? And thus resulting Homo sapien. Or mankind as we know it now. Now, there is evidence that cites this to support this belief, okay? One of the main pieces of evidence for this is in the ancient Sumerian texts, there are what they call space maps, and these astronomical space maps certainly should have existed well beyond the technological and intellectual capabilities of this civilization, and yet, they're there. And we have to accept the fact that they're there, okay? There's nothing we can do to escape it, and we have no explanation for why they were able to do this. The Sumerians actually lacked the technological telescopes to be able to track Uranus and Neptune's orbits and to be able to route maps from that. They didn't have any of that. But their maps dictate the orbits of the planets, including Nibiru. And the maps actually accurately detail the entire Earth from space. How, do, how can you explain that? A perspective so impossible for ancient civilizations that we really can't even explain it to, to this day. And what's cool is this map was actually discovered in the ruins of the Royal Library in Nineveh. And we can even turn to other ancient civilizations who also consistently had astronomical evidence and intelligence beyond their scope. Okay, let's turn to the Babylonians. The Babylonians had a map that depicted Jupiter around 350 to 50 BC. And they portrayed Jupiter's orbit based on their geometrical calculations. What? Now, there is some counter-arguments to Zachariah Stitchin's evidence, and it comes from a man named Dr. Michael S. Heiser, who actually holds a PhD in Hebrew Biblical Studies and Semitic Languages. He poses a critical question. Heiser asserts that there is no mention of the actual connection between the Anunnaki and Nibiru. And Heiser actually goes on to question some of Zachariah's interpretations of some of his translated words, questions some of that, such as the word for fire. And one could certainly offer the argument that Zachariah Stitchin might have suffered from some sort of confirmation bias, being one of the only people on the planet to be able to translate these texts, and not also having any formal Semitic, Hebrewistic teaching, linguistic teaching. But I want to say that it is at least interesting to think about, and even if a fraction of what Zachariah Stitchin has figured out is to be true, it will completely rewrite the historical articulation of humankind for all of future to be able to experience now. And I think that that's really cool and I think that that's worth studying. One positive thing to note here is that Zachariah Stitchin asserts that the Anunnaki were actually the ones who built the pyramids. And not only the pyramids, but apparently they built all monumental structures across the ancient world. And Stitchin actually expands on this in a, another book that he wrote called The Stairway to Heaven. Either way, it is absolutely mind-blowing to think that we actually have extraterrestrial origins. And I'm very glad that I got asked to explore this subject. If you like this video, remember, this channel is dedicated to being able to reveal this information to you. I do the research. I then format it into a video just like this to give you a summation of the concept. I want to be able to present to you all any of the information that you all want to learn about in an open, honest forum and discussion, okay, with nothing but truth and fact. I'm not going to distort any words. I'm not going to do any of that. I just want to bring you the truth. If you're new to the channel, leave a sub. And I would love to hear your ideas on human origins as well. So leave me a comment down below if you believe in Zachariah Stitchin's work or whether you have your own theory. I would love to have a discussion with you. For more information on this, I would recommend highly to look up the Wikipedia and to go to Zachariah Stitchin's websites, okay, and maybe even read some of his books. So that's all I have for this time. I hope to have shed some light on the Anunnaki and the possibility of human origins here. And I'll catch you later. Bye.